Welcome to the Pursuit of Coconuts. I'm Poland, and this is episode three of our aquaponic farm build. We're creating a social enterprise in the middle of the jungle in the Philippines. So we're hoping to create a beautiful place that we can train, empower, and educate farmers and young farmers. So we're partnering up with schools, local government units to use this as a tool to really empower the community here through aquaponics. So we've got our ponds being built out. We're almost finished. They've built the structure. The planters are an integral part of an aquaponic system. This is where we will be growing our vegetables. I have to admit, the masonry work over here is superb, but one of the biggest challenges definitely was the plumbing. Once the outline of the planters and the foundation of the planter is set, the pond dug out, we are ready to set our plumbing. This is where disaster struck. The main plumbing that you see now are the drains for the planters. We have two drains coming from each planter. One is working as a backup drain just in case the other one gets clogged. Now the tricky part is our two inch drain needs to be well ventilated so that way it does not burp or cause gargle or create bubbles as the drain goes. So we had to connect a two inch drain and directly under it go to a four inch drain to create the velocity that we need for the drain to not get backed up. This was explained about 10 times. I've set everything in place and the plumber went back to what he was used to and connected the two inch drain all the way to a run and then connected it to the four inch drain. This would cause an airflow deficiency and will cause burping and not a good thing for the system. So we had to correct this, I t kid you not, three to five times and I had to fire the plumber. These ponds will feed the beds and the beds then will uh, drain through gravity. So these are real simple but yet updated technology on farming. Um, we're trying to use local and native materials. These hollow blocks are made local over here. The way that these are built are with hollow block shaping. With the pond in place and the planters now getting built, we need to protect it with building the riprap. So the riprap is pretty much the retaining wall to make sure that the surrounding dirt and land does not collapse. We're trying to go uh, eco-friendly. We're trying to use all the material on the land. We're trying to be as resourceful as possible. Uh, we have a great crew of local people that working here. We committed ourselves to hire local and over 50% actually come from this neighborhood. So this aquaponic farm tomorrow, we're gonna be pouring the foundation beds uh, in the planters. And then after that, we'll be able to build them up. They are just starting to pour concrete on the planters to create the foundation base. And these will be about a foot deep planters uh, that will be fed with water, filled with gravel, and the plants will grow in here. And the water is coming from ponds. So we're probably about a week and a half away from getting these completed. We'll paint them with waterproofing so that the concrete doesn't leach into the system and the lime doesn't leach into the plants and it's not healthy for the plants. But this is the first step or the next step, I should say, to getting there. So we have the framing out and kind of placing them. We got the plumbing in, which took some time and now we've got the concrete being filled in here. So it's a process, but next step ahead of us. We ran into a few issues. We only have one cement mixer and we had to change that motor out. Lots of the vibration damaged the bearings and so that needed to get changed. Now the rest of the labor is done manually. You see them carrying everything by hand, pouring everything, bending everything, placing everything, all by hand. Again, all in their sandals. did was pour a foundation of concrete on the bottom first and then we stacked the hollow blocks around the perimeter with the rebars bent to give it strength and integrity and this created a 20 by 4 feet box which created the planters and it is going to be about a one foot deep and the plumbing is going to be about 12 inches 
and then we'll cut it down to about 11 inches. And we wanna be about one inch below the top of the planters for the rock line. And that will create enough space for all the rocks to fit in. And for each pond, we created five planters. And that was the estimate of calculations for the drainage, for the water filtration, for the bacteria to build up, and for the calculations of a healthy aquaponic system. Things were starting to come together and I was super excited, but what is a farm, but not any storage shed. We had to make it cute and the architecture be a little bit unique to stand out against the planters. We used a traditional hollow block, but we also added a little bit of USA engineering for the wood build. Not only did we want this place to be functional, but we wanted it to be beautiful. So we added conduit and outlets in every single hole. And we planned to put little LED lights. So at night, the pathways and the lights would be illuminated, making the place just a heavenly place to see. Now I gotta say my electrician and my electrical team they were on point. We were on the same page and they actually helped plan out a few things and added a few of their ideas. And that was just amazing to have, especially after our plumbing issues. All right, this is the exciting part. We're actually starting to fill the planters to test it. We've already painted it with waterproofing and now we're seeing how everything worked. There are small hairline cracks and the water is seeping through. That's very frustrating, but the good news is as the water sits there and fills, the cracks actually gets filled with these little mineral deposits and over time it actually self fills. And this concrete type is mixed with a, they call it Sahara, but it's a mix that waterproofs the concrete and as water sits in it, it collects and you'll see little white residue on the cracks and that's the effervescence of it coming through and it actually self heals. And so I'm hopeful that these cracks will go away. All right, they take old concrete sacks that was filled with the concrete mix and then they fill it with dirt. And this is actually how they move dirt around. Barefoot and all without a wheelbarrow, they carry these sacks by hand on their head, on their shoulders, just to move them around. What I appreciate about the team is their teamwork abilities and they work together as a chain. No weak links, everybody carries their weight, covering their faces so they don't get sunburned. All in sandals, still trips me out. This is an aquaponic farm located in Bohol, Philippines, and this is set to be the first co aquaponic cooperative in all of the Philippines. This is a large scale farming. We've got five ponds that we'll be building. And in those ponds, we can grow about 1,000 to 1,500 tilapias. These beds, there's gonna be 24 complete beds looking to produce over 1,000 pounds or 1,500 pounds of produce every month. This is a social economic development program that is a social enterprise gearing towards supporting local low income farmers and communities. In this neighborhood called Thigbao, there's not a lot, of, uh, a lot of jobs. So this is creating multiple jobs. We've got over 15 people working on the farm here and we'll be able to create one of these and 28 other barangays in Lobok, creating a co-op. Continue to watch us, support us, if you have any questions, please reach out. We look forward to answering all your questions and also working along the great people here in Lobok Bohol. Through the ups and downs, the persistence of these farmers and their hard work ethic motivates me to keep going. We also have support from a few foundations, the Van de Steeg Foundation and also Uplift Foundation, which has supported us to be able to create 10 full-time jobs for this year for the farm workers and also for the construction guys here. So thank you and shout outs to them. Thank you, Aaron, our aquaponics specialist who has given us the step-by-step -step formula to creating this farm. We owe it to you that this is actually coming together and in existence here in the middle of the jungle. Thank you for following us on the pursuit of coconuts as we establish a social enterprise that will then train local farmers to do regenerative agriculture and also building a global business that will support the work that we do here. And for everybody else, 
Once again, thank you for following along. Your support keeps us going. So we look forward to seeing you on the next one as we continue this farm build.